And time now to take a look at what's been making headlines across the world. And it's Friday, so it's the turn of Solange Mujan. Hello, Solange. Hi, Annette. Now, after Thursday's military coup in Sudan and the ousting of President al-Bashir, Sudanese uh, media are now focusing on how the protesters have shifted their focus and they're now calling for the military to step down. Yeah, the Sudan Tribune uh, says that tens of thousands that have been protesting the, for regime change were, quote, clearly frustrated by the news that General Awad bin Uf was the one to take the dictator's place, for he had been President al-Bashir's defense minister for the past four years. And protesters even thought it was actually a hoax at first. Um, the Sudan, Sudan Tribune says that the association organizing the protesters will continue in the streets until, quote, comprehensive change is achieved. Now, this is a stand that Le Monde's correspondent in Sudan also describes. He says sources told him that there were actually two coups in the works within the military before yesterday's move. One coup was being supported by the opposition and former members of al-Bashir's entourage that had been ousted over the years. And the other coup was for, uh, from those within al-Bashir's team. Uh, and they were sort of in damage control mode or trying to save what they could of the elite. And they are the ones that took over yesterday. Now, many Many uh, protesters have defied the military's curfew and say they're not going to give up, and among them are a number of women. A number of women, indeed. Uh, the role of women in this protest movement is being widely discussed, namely since a photograph of a Sudanese woman protesting in a white traditional dress went viral. And France 24 actually has a really interesting article on its website about how women bore the brunt of al-Bashir's, uh, to a large part, uh, al-Bashir's human rights abuses. And for them, the possibility of continuing under Islamic military leaders is out of the question. So, and a little plug here for if you are inter interested in this, head to France 24's website and Annette's actually upcoming 51 percent show, which will dive into uh, uh, deeper into the role of women in the Sudanese movement. I just have to say there's a disclaimer here. I did not pay Solange to <laughs> no. say, say that. OK, one of the main things, however, that's got so many of these protesters out on the street is the state of the economy. Yeah, the Washington Post's editorial board explains that people are fed up with the economic misery in Sudan, and that that is what is fi finally ousted the president. Even if the Sudanese opposition and the international community have been pushing for al-Bashir to be disposed for decades. And the Post says that other leaders, including Donald Trump, should take note that blindly backing autocrats is a bad bet because at some point the streets rise up. OK, now, the other big story of the day, of course, is the uh, arrest of uh, Julian Assange uh, in London. And Politico is saying that the founder of WikiLeaks may have already won his legal case. Yeah, Politico goes through the legal arguments that are going to come up with Assange's case. And they argue that the charges levied against him, which are conspiracy to commit commu computer intrusion, are, quote, weak tea and will simply serve the purpose of giving Assange a platform. Meanwhile, The Washington Post says in its editorial that Assange is undoubtedly, quote, a dirtbag, but that his ar arrest isn't necessarily a good thing, because what really is at issue here is not breaking into a computer, but the leaking of classified information. And doing that, The Post says, is something honorable and necessary, and that from a journalistic standpoint, criminalizing the ability to receive or to publish classified information would be a blow to journalists. Now, for Bloomberg, the issue is simply if Assange burglared computers, he stopped being a journalist. And they say, as The Post does, that if he broke the law, he stopped being just the messenger and he became a criminal. And shifting gears now and turning to some medical news, Solange, about a potentially fatal fungus that is hiding in hospitals around the world. It really is a hypochondriac's worst nightmare. Yeah, and it may become everyone's worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, if you haven't heard about Candida auris, uh, then there is actually a reason for that, and you're now likely to hear a lot more about it. Slate tells us that uh, Candida auris is a fungus that's been found in hospitals, but it 
it's incredibly hard to get rid of. It can kill you within 90 days if you have a weak immune system. It's drug resistant, so antibiotics won't kill it. And it spreads silently and easily. And it's actually come about, according to the article, in its current form because of the overuse of antibiotics and pesticides, which it is adapted to. Now, an investigation published in the New York Times last week found that cases have been found across the globe and that one hospital had to rip out its ceiling to get rid of it. And the Times investigation also found something perhaps even more disturbing. Hospitals have been hiding their cases from the public for fear of creating panic. But the Times argues that more transparency is needed to be able to save people un from unnecessary exposure and actually to find a way to kill this candida auris. And staying with Science Solange, the American press is also covering a very interesting study of twins. Yeah, twin astronauts, actually. This is the story of Mark and Scott Kelly. They're identical twins, but Scott spent a year in outer space. And The Atlantic tells us that the scientists, scientists analyzed what that experience did to his body, and they compared the results to his twin who stayed on Earth. And they found some really positive things. Parts of his DNA were regenerating and essentially getting younger when he was in, his, in space, which led scientists to wonder, is space the uh, fountain of youth. But The Atlantic tells us not so fast, that the chromosome renewal actually reversed as soon as Scott Kelly came back to Earth, and that other things like high doses of radiation in space create risks of cancer. So the conclusion here, according to the study, is that our bodies like to stay where they are on planet Earth. And noted. Thanks for <laughs> that, Solange. And if you'd like to take a look at the stories that Solange has been talking about, especially that France 24 article about the role of women in those Sudanese protests, do head to our website, that of course being france24.com.